Good morning. It is Gratitude Monday, and I am so thankful to have a voice. Now, a lot of people may know that I suffer with um, gastrointestinal um, reflux disorder, so, or, or GERD. And good morning, Joelle. And when I had my two daughters, I was really going through a very rough time um, with the acid reflux and to the point where I ended up after 18 months of trying to get a diagnosis I ended up having an ulcer on my larynx and I had vocal cord damage so it was a, a real serious thing and my voice was like all over the place sometimes I would have a voice sometimes I would not have a voice good morning Lynn thanks for joining today and it was very very frustrating good morning David it was very frustrating because I never knew if I was going to be able to talk or not. And as a physical therapist, I talk all day. And so I was considered a professional speaker and I had to go to vocal therapy to learn how to use my voice, learn how to use my diaphragm and allow my vocal cords to actually get stronger. So I had all these crazy exercises and in fact, what would happen is I had a CD that was eight minutes long and my kids were young. So, you know, I had a, an 18 month old and a newborn infant at the time. And then about, then I had a three month old and a two year old. And what that meant was when we were in the car, mommy had to do her vocal exercises. So I would put this CD in and I would be basically going like e like that to work <laughs> and to their daycare. And so they would mimic me and it was hilarious because we would have these vocal exercises going on and they would be mimicking me. They're, they're sponges at that age. And so they would be making all these sounds and I would be making these sounds. And if anybody actually heard this vehicle driving down the road, they would be like dying of laughter because it was pretty hilarious. But it was a serious thing because I needed to strengthen my vocal cords and, and get my voice back so I could talk all day. And so that has healed and that, that happened in 2000. 10 it was kind of a journey like I said 2009 through 2011 I was dealing with that and I still to this day have to be very very careful with my voice so I'm not a yeller I don't like to scream I don't like to shout I can't cheer at games where you know my team is winning and I'm excited but I gotta hold back with my voice or I will strain my vocal cords and I can feel that so if I have to shout or anything like that with um, my coaching, I actually just raise my hand and do this because I cannot project my volume over a group of like 20 something middle schoolers or 15 to 20 high schoolers. I just can't, I can't overwhelm them with my voice. So I just hold up two fingers and I just wait. And so it's taught me a lot of patience. It's also taught me a lot of strategy on how I'm going to speak. And now it's even more and more important because as I move my business from a in-office uh, platform, and even though I'm still taking a few clients in my office, I'm really moving it to online. And my voice is everything to me. And so I'm very, very thankful for my voice and I've had a friendly reminder to not take my voice for granted. Over the past five weeks, my husband has lost his voice and he had had pneumonia earlier this year. He had had the flu and good morning, Julianne, thanks for joining. And we thought maybe his vocal issues were related to previous illnesses, but he went to a specialist on Friday, a very well-known uh, vocal specialist, uh, ENT, and there is absolutely no physical explanation on why he does not have a voice. He has no scarring from previous uh, infections. He has no tumor, no growth. All of that is really, really great, and I'm super thankful for that, but he still has no voice, and there's no ex explanation. Uh, he he basically has a paralyzed vocal cord and 
all the surrounding muscles are working correctly but he doesn't have a voice and so we jokingly say that now I am officially married to Batman if you've ever seen the Dark Knight movies and Christian Bale I think that's the actor in the Dark Knight movies that's my husband's voice and I'll be honest it's a little good morning Dan how are you I'll be honest um, that voice is a little sexy and it's a really kind of intriguing but that's not his normal voice so yes I am married to Batman and we kind of have a joke about it but it is kind of a serious thing because we don't know if his voice is ever gonna come back that's what the doctor said so he cannot project volume he cannot uh, speak at a normal tone he cannot sing and my husband likes to sing he plays the mandolin um, he likes to sing when he's playing the mandolin uh, he also plays trombone doesn't need to sing for that but we don't know how the amateur of his um, of his mouth and and just if that's going to impact anything because he has to really be able to exhale when he plays the trombone good morning will thanks for joining this morning and we just don't know he his voice could come back in three months six months a year or it could never come back and I am just so grateful because it is a reminder to me when I could not speak when I had that ulcer on my larynx when I had vocal cord damage myself and it was a two-year journey where I really had to learn how to use my voice correctly and how to strengthen my vocal cords it is a reminder to me as I watch him go through this to not take your voice for granted. There's so many things that we do with our voice, just communicating affection, communicating love, communicating friendship, communicating instruction, that to not have a voice, that could be devastating for someone's career. And there are ways to still get your voice out there, especially now with social media, with texting, email, blogs. There's so many ways to get your voice out there. And I encourage you not to take your voice for granted. You got something to say and you're passionate about saying it. Say it in a respectful way. Be passionate about it. Teach people. And that's what I'm trying, I'm trying to do with my business is have a voice for people who don't know where to begin with fitness, with nutrition, with just their health. I am so passionate about sharing with people and teaching people how to have their best health in a way that is healthy. There are a lot of fad issues out there, a lot of fad diets, a lot of crash and burn workout routines, and you know people crash and then they have to see a physical therapist like myself I want to help people prevent that from happening and I want to use my voice to teach people how to have their best health so they're not missing out on the things they love and on their time with their family health is such a major component of the quality of life and as I've gone through my own health issues, whether it's my voice issues or some cancer scares or just some digestive issues, it's scary stuff. And when you can't do what you want to do, it's, it's so impactful. It can be paralyzing in the sense that you just don't know where to start. And that's where I come in and helping people find the best options for them so yes this this post today my little soapbox today is about finding your voice and being gratitude or, or thankful for having a voice but it's also about don't take any day for granted you got something to say say it because there might be a time where you can't and you might not be able to say it in the way that you want to my husband's going to have to learn how to communicate more through choosing his words wisely. It doesn't hurt him to talk. He doesn't have to be on vocal rest. He doesn't have an infection. He doesn't have anything like that. But he's still going to have to learn how to use his voice because the air coming out of his mouth and out of his throat is different. 
he's exhaling more. So he has to learn how to control his breathing when he's talking. He can't take just anything for granted when it comes to having to be vocal about something. He's going to have to learn how to communicate either with a voice amplifier, like a device that he's going to have to wear, or I don't know if we're going to have to do something with his telephone or his um, cell phone, because when, when you talk to him on the phone, you can barely hear him. We don't know what our next steps are yet, and we're going to learn that over the course of the next few weeks. But don't be afraid to voice your opinion. Don't be afraid to voice what you're passionate about because you might not have a voice one day. You might just wake up and all of a sudden your voice is gone. Literally, that's what has happened with him. So be passionate about something. Excuse me. Ah, you guys caught me. That's my timer so I don't forget to change my laundry. <laughs> hey, you know what? This is real. This is live. So that's what happens. Um, but don't, don't, for, don't take any day for granted. You got something passionate to say, say it. Because you might wake up one day and you might not have a voice. You might have to relearn how to communicate what you're passionate about in, a, in another way. Praying for all of you. I love all of you. Thank you so much for watching this morning. If you watch this on a replay, go ahead and hit replay in the comments. Make your comments like what are you struggling with? What are you passionate about? And what do you have a voice that you want to chat about? Thanks a lot. Have a blessed day. Give a great day. And thank you all. Take care.